Hi everyone and welcome back to the Organized Notebook. In this video, we will be going over every database property that's available in Notion. Properties are what give context to a database item and they're things like tags, dates, time, and so on. So they're very useful and essential for making the most out of Notion. So let's get started. So for this tutorial, we will start by going to an empty Notion page and feel free to follow along as we do this. So first we need a database in order to make database properties. So let's start with the table view database, which is one of the most simplest databases, uh, database views in Notion. So for that, you'll want to do slash table and make sure to go to the database table view. And let's do plus new database. And this is going to be our sample database for this tutorial. So you'll notice already that they have two columns here. And these are already properties of the database, which is name and tags. But since we are going to be going over every single property, let's actually go ahead and delete the tags and we'll come back to this later. So we'll delete this property. So now we're just left with name and every database item must have a name because basically a database item is a page and each page has to have a name. Um, so it cannot just be empty. So even if you click here, you'll notice it says untitled. So this is just a blank page, but the name is still existing. So to start, uh, let's add a new database property by clicking the plus button here. And you'll notice that the first type you see is text. So let's click on text. And you have the option to rename this property title and even the icon, but the type will always be text if you choose text. So a text property is, as it says, a text property, and you can just type whatever you want. So they're great for descriptions or extra information you want to add to something. So we often use this property as notes. So let's say you have a page, page one, and you have notes for that page. So if we open this, you'll see that now page one has notes. So text properties are very useful. They're very basic, but of course, essential. So the next property on the list is number. So a number property is, as it says, a number. So it has to be uh, any of these formats. So you have the chance for having a number, number with commas, percent, dollars, and a whole bunch of different currencies. So this is great if you need to keep track of numerical values, uh, especially things like money, if you're making a budget tracker, or if you're trying to keep track of a percentage, these are all useful. And then on top of that, you can choose to display this information in three options. So just pure number, a bar, or a ring. So just for example, let's try entering a number here. So we'll put 10. So this 10, if we change the property, edit the property, number property, we can see that we have selected just to show the number. Well, we can also show it as a bar. So now you see that this 10 is the number out of 100. And you can even toggle this on or off. And the same thing with ring, but it's just a circle shape. And you can toggle it on or off the number. And you can even change what you divide it by. So if we put 10, it should be a full circle. And then when it's 100, it's like that. And you can even change the colors in all of Notion's um, color schemes. So number is very useful. And let's say you wanted a percent, you can show the percentage, you can show the dollars, and so on. 
So I think that this is very intuitive property as well. And if we check the page, now you see that there is the number and there's the notes. So the next property we'll be adding is the select property. So select property means that you have to select something, a text out of certain choices. So it kind of acts like a tag, but you can only choose one. So let's say that we have here contacted. And then you create a select property, a uh, select option called contacted. Then you can also make need to contact. So you can either select contacted or need to contact, but you cannot select both. So select is for things where you only have one option out of many. Then the next property we'll do is multi-select. So multi-select is basically the select property, but you can select multiple. So let's say you have, what if page one is a book and it's both a romance novel and fiction. So then you have two options that you've selected to describe this page. And now if we go to page, you'll notice that uh, these exist here. So next, we will go to status. So status is actually quite similar to select, and you can almost use it similarly, but it is more suitable for if you want a database um, to look more like a Kanban board. But since we are in a table, you cannot see that as clearly. But as you can see, there's to do, in progress, and complete. And within these, you can add your own categories as well and basically change the status of whatever is here. So this is usually great for task databases. So if you have a task and you want to mark it as not started, in progress, or done, definitely use this status type. The next one we'll go over is date. So if we go here, we'll select date. And the date property also has many options. So if you have a date type, you have the choice out of all of these date formats, depending on what you need. So either the full date or different ordering systems. And also another thing that's great is the relative date format, which means that it'll take the day and tell you based on your current day. Um, and then there's also the time format. So if you want 12 hour or 24 hour. So just as an example, let's put a date, which is tomorrow. And if we had this date property as a relative, you'll see that it says tomorrow. But if we have it as full date, it's the full date. And if we wanted to reorder it in some other way, you can do it like so. So the next property we'll go over is person. And for person, that person must be able to be a member and access your page in order to be selectable as a person. So this is just people who are in your team or workspace and can access this page and make edits. So next we have files and media. So files and media, as the name suggests, you can add upload file or embed a link. And next we will go over the checkbox property. And these are great for if you have a task database and you need to mark whether something is done or not. Checkboxes are great. And then we have URL property and URL, as the name suggests, you will type a URL here and it's going to be a clickable hyperlink. The next thing we have here is email and this also will automatically format 
whatever you put into here as an email address. And it's very useful because all you have to do is click it and then it will take you to that email. And then we have phone, which also works similarly. So if you put a phone number here and you click it, you're going to automatically call that person. And then after phone, we have formula. So formula is a bit more complicated and we could spend a whole video talking just about formulas, but we'll just give you a brief description of what this is. So if we click formula and we edit the property by itself, it's not really going to do anything. So you have to edit the property and then you go to edit. You'll see that you have all these things. And now you might notice that on the left hand side, you can see all of these properties we, which we have just created. So the Notion formula can make different outputs depending on what you put inside the formula and sort of have different properties react to each other. So that's kind of the, the easy explanation of this. So, but uh, yeah, it's a little bit difficult. Like if you put name, for example, you can do name dot split and then with a space at zero or like name dot style and all sorts of things you can do with each property. So that will be for another video. So the next property we'll take a look at is the relation data uh, relation property. And for this, we created another database called relation database to show you as an example. And if we go here, we can select the relation database over here and click on it. And then there's various choices. So we're going to relate it to the relation database. There's not going to be any limit to how many pages we can relate to it and whether or not we want to show it on the relation database. And then we can add a relation. So now this database has a relation to this one. So if we made a page here, sample page, we can now go here and link it to sample page. So this is basics of how a relation works with Notion. But we will make another video just about relation databases on Notion. And then the next thing we have is the rollup. So rollup allows you to search for the property of the relation database. So if we put rollup and then we're going to relate it to the relation database, and we can choose which property. So the name of the, the item that's related and so on. So now we have name, so it's going to show the name of this database. And then the next property we have uh, are all of these created time, created by, last edited time, last edited by. So these are just information that's going to be generated on its own based on when you created the page, uh, who the page was created by, when it was last edited, and who it was last edited by. So these are useful if you just need to track information like that, but you don't really need to do anything besides choosing this uh, property. So if I choose this, it's already generated the created time. And then we have this ID property, and this is just going to generate a unique ID for every item in your database. So this is useful if you need to make a separate ID number for everything, and you can even choose the prefix and things like that. So that's the basics of properties in Notion databases. And like we did here, you can just click the plus sign to make a new property for example, in a table, but you can also add them in the page. So if you click plus add property, it's going to add a property to the whole database. And you can even move these around so that you can reorder them as you wish. And the other thing you should know is that you can also add properties to the three dots on top over here. You can also click plus property. And the last thing that's very important is that you can choose which ones to hide and which ones 
to show. So for example, if we only wanted to see the nodes in this table, we can just hide all of these like this and we only see notes. But when we click open here, you can see them all. So yeah, that's basics of Notion database properties. Thank you so much for watching. We hope that you were able to gain some useful information regarding database properties. And let us know in the comments if you have any questions or thoughts. And we hope to see you in the next one.